Hi, this is Mr Evans. This video is um, a video that's going to look at a question on financial ratios. The question is, the finance director is concerned about the financial health of the business. To what extent do you think that she should be concerned? Of course, whenever we get a question on, uh, whenever we get a case study, it's a good idea to read the question first, because that can help us read the case study with a purpose. So, um, and looking at the question, we should know, as soon as we see financial health, financial performance as A-level business students, how do we analyse financial health, financial performance of a business? Well, we've got our ratios that are tools to help us do that. So this is um, the case study. It might be worth you just pausing the video and reading the information here. And this is the financial data that uh, may come along with the question. So AQA are big fans of giving maybe one year's financial performance data where they've calculated ratios for you, but then a second year in which they don't calculate ratios. They give you an income statement and a balance sheet, and they expect you to, um, the implicit hint, it's quite an obvious hint, I suppose, is to go away and calculate uh, these ratios so you have um, a meaningful basis to compare one year's performance with the following years. It's really, really, really important to know your financial ratios. If you're unsure on the different financial ratios and how they're calculated and exactly what they mean, then revise that very, very hard because AQA really like aren't asking questions on ratio analysis. Um, so maybe it's worth just pausing here and calculating uh, any ratios that you can. And what I would do if I was in a, an exam is I would write my answers down to the different calculations and I'd have them right there. And then I would plan my essay. Um, and that's my plan for this essay. So again, it might be worth you just pausing the video and thinking about how you would answer this question, is the financial director right to be concerned about the financial health of the business? And what I always tell my students is that when you get one of these questions on ratio analysis, the best answers are going to combine what they've read in the text with the calculations that they make of the different ratios. That's what the real skill is. Um, to answer the question if she should be concerned, you need to know some qualitative information about the company and then you can make some judgment about their quantitative performance. So uh, let's have a look at how I've tried to answer the question. Um, so uh, the finance director is concerned about the financial health of the business. To what extent do you think that she should be concerned? So I'm going to start off by having a look at why they may be concerned about the falling profitability that I've calculated here. So the financial director's concern may be about the profitability. First concern may be about the profitability of the company. The operating profit margin has fallen considerably uh, from 24.4% to 11.6% in one year, coupled with the deterioration in return on capital employed. Uh, and a much lower retained profit. This could lead to difficulty attracting new investors as they may have concerns about the long-term performance of the business, which could make their international expansion harder to fund. Now in here, I have clearly shown the examiner that I have uh, done my calculations, which is what they want to know. They want you to be able to use this data. Um, and then I've explained why it might be a concern, all right? New investors, shareholders, potential new investors might be concerned about these falling profit margins. Um, and this company, as we know from the written data, is about to um, do a big international expansion. So that might be particularly concerning if they need shareholders, new shareholders to fund that. Okay, so that's why, a very simple paragraph to start off, about why this falling profitability could be a problem. On the other hand, falling profitability tells the story of a business that uh, is expanding. 
Perhaps increases in costs are inevitable when opening a new network of stores. So I'm marrying up this fall in profit ability to the fact that they've invested heavily in building their new UK presence. They've opened 15 stores. Rent in out-of-town shopping centres may be expensive and have increased fixed costs, and it's likely that the stores would have taken some time to renovate, and so we're not generating revenues for a period. In other words, if you buy a bunch of new premises, you can't start trading out of them right away. You've got to do them up, kit them out, etc. Indeed, the lower return on capital employed could be in indicative of an increase in fixed assets that were not generating revenues. Okay, if you know the return on capital employed, total capital employed is going to go up if you purchase more fixed assets. If that's not matched by an increase in revenues, you're going to get falling return on capital employed. I believe the falling profitability will not be much of an issue in the future as it appears the UK expansion is complete and the new stores will start to generate revenues. Okay, I'm marrying up what I know Yes, they've got fallen profitability, but this is part of their strategy uh, for um, building a strong sales base in the UK. So hopefully this new profitability won't be too much of a problem in the future. So I've got some evaluations and judgment right there in my essay. And hopefully you can see, you should know by now that a top level answer will show some balance. So I've got some analysis here and I've got some evaluation as well over these two paragraphs. Okay, now, so I've talked about profitability. I also could talk about liquidity and gearing because uh, I have managed to calculate those things. So let's have a look at what I've said um, about them. Potentially more concerning uh, to the short term survival of the business is the fall in current ratio to 1.47 to 1. Okay, again, I've chucked in my calculation so the examiner can see that I've done it. Um, whilst this figure is not hugely alarming in itself, the case study makes clear that the majority of Raspberry's current assets are stock. Okay, so 1.47 to 1 isn't too bad, but they've spent considerable amounts on stock. Stock is a current asset. Okay, this could be an issue for a closed retailer because stock has a very short shelf life thanks to seasonal demand and changes in fashion. Okay, I'm building a chain of analysis based on my calculations, but also what I know about the fashion industry. Therefore, this stock may have to be hugely discounted to sell, which could result in Raspberry having difficulty paying their current liabilities. Okay, so it's all very well saying we've got all of this, these current assets, but if most of it is stock, stock may have to be discounted to sell. At the same time, gearing has risen to 54.5%, so it seems the financial director could be concerned, uh, could be justified in being concerned at the risk of overtrading. This occurs when a growing business expands too fast and has insufficient inflows of cash to meet their payment obligations and could ultimately mean the company goes into liquidation. Whenever you get a case study that hints at uh, you know, a fast expansion program, 15 stores. All right, you might want to think about, is this company at risk of overtrading? They've spent loads of money on stock, okay? Um, and that can be a big risk. That can be an indication that this company is at risk of overtrading. Are they going to be able to get those stores open and get some cash coming in before they run out of money? If not, then maybe they're at risk of overtrading. Okay, but um, so I've explained why the gearing, which I've calculated, I put that in there, and the current ratio might be concerning. And so that's one side of the argument. The other side of the argument, why might it not be so severe? Well, the business seems to have a good track record and the stock was bought to ensure the stores had new inventory. As long as Raspberry keep abreast of changes in consumer taste, they should be able to move the stock and liquidity may not be a problem. In addition to this, the company's gearing is also reflective of an organisation that has borrowed to fund its expansion. Okay, so they've borrowed this money. Um, as long as the company does not borrow more and the new network of shops, shops are successful, they should be able to repay their loans and the business will be able to reduce their high gearing going forward. Okay, so I've used the data in the case study to evaluate my um, calculations, right? 
not great that we've got the uh, majority of uh, current assets in stock for a fashion retailer, but as long as they can sell that, it should be all right. And this increase in gearing is perfectly you know, explainable given the fact that they've opened a whole network of new shops, you know, and uh, hopefully those shops will open and that will naturally lead to a fall in this gearing as long as they don't have to borrow more money. In conclusion, I believe the finance director is correct to be concerned about the risk of overtrading. Okay, so this word concern um, was one that I'm echoing from the question. Okay, this is, so I've answered the question, she is correct to be concerned about the risk of overtrading. This is because they have expanded quickly and there is a risk they have purchased too much stock. Uh, there's a risk they've purchased too much stock and they won't, oh uh, sorry. There's a risk they've purchased too much stock, they won't be able to sell and meet their liabilities. Okay, so I'm explaining, I've answered the question and I've explained why I believe they're at risk of overtrading. However, it seems that the UK part of their expansion programme is over, so this is a bit of balance. Therefore, the concerns of the finance director may be eased if the company takes a couple of years to consolidate their financial position before attempting the potentially high cost move of expanding into international markets. So this is a solution to, yes, she may be correct, the finance director, um, to be con a little bit concerned. However, the expansion programme is over, but I've got a solution here to make sure that the um, finance director doesn't get too much more concerned, all right? Um, they've built their strong sales base in the UK, or they've built their strong base in the UK. They now need to generate some sales from these assets before they go on to the international expansion. So hopefully you can see there how I've used um, the calculations and the case study to come to a conclusion that's well justified and thought out.